Leadership is a process of social influence that leverages the effort of others in order to attain a goal. It's about turning the vision into reality. However, management is all about directing and controlling things or a group of people in order to reach a goal. Leadership and management are not similar terms, but for maximum organizational effectiveness, organizations require strong leadership and management. Through this course, we will understand the relationship between leadership and management. We will also cover different leadership theories, styles and principles. So put on your thinking hats and let's get started with this session on leadership and management. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so that you don't miss out on any new updates or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing. So make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on the video for any queries or suggestions and I'll respond to your comments. Hello, my name is Shantanu Rana and I will be teaching you this course on leadership and management by great learning. So whenever we talk about the corporate world, we talk about the business world, there are generally two aspects. One is leadership and one is management. I want all of you to pause the screen for a while and think about it. What do you think? Are leaders completely the same as managers? What do you think? Leadership is the opposite of management? What exactly is the scenario? That is something we will be exploring in this particular course. I'll be telling you what exactly is leadership, what is management? What exactly is the difference between these two terms? And we'll also be seeing how these two terms are related to each other in the corporate world. That is something we are going to discover in this particular course. Along with that, I will also be giving you some principles, some theories and some styles of leadership. You can also see what exactly will be your style of leadership and what are the different theories for it, which is only going to help you. So let's not waste any time and directly move to the agenda where I'll be telling you all the modules that we are going to cover in this particular course. So as you can see on the screen, the very first thing that we will be discovering in this course is what is leadership and management. We'll be looking at the definition of leadership and management and we'll also be seeing what are the different important aspects when we talk about leadership or when we talk about management. Then the relationship between leadership and management how these two terms are related to each other in the corporate world. What exactly is the relationship like and how this relationship can be changed depending upon a number of factors. All of that will also be explored in the second module. Then we'll be looking at the importance of leadership and management. What exactly is the importance of it? Why it is extremely important whenever we talk about any organization, whenever we talk about any team, be it your sales team in the organization, be it your marketing team, it is extremely important. We need to lead people. We need to organize things. We need to direct and control people as well. All of that is part of leadership and management. So we'll be looking at the importance of it. Then difference between leadership and management. So a lot of us will have this confusion that leadership is completely the same as management, which is actually not true. So in this particular module, I will be telling you what exactly is the role of managers and then what exactly is the role of leaders and how those two roles and responsibilities are completely different from each other. But at the same time, there is some connection as well that we'll be exploring in this module and the leadership theories leadership styles in management and finally leadership principles. We'll be exploring each of these things about leadership and management and by the end of this course you'll be very sure that what exactly will be the suitable leadership style for you, what exactly are the theories that you should implement in your leadership and management journey when you are going for the corporate world. So let's just wait and cover each of these topics one by one. All right so let's just start this course with the definition of leadership and management. What exactly is leadership and management? As you can see on the screen in the definition of leadership that it is a process of social influence that leverages the efforts of others in order to attain a goal. The ability to turn a vision into reality is what leadership is all about. Leadership is more about leading people. The important word here is social influence. 
it is not about managing things or organizing things or finding the best way to do a particular thing finding the efficiency or effectiveness of a particular thing it is not about that it is about having a social influence it is about motivating people it is about having a clear vision and making that a reality however on the other hand if you talk about management that will answer the what and why of that vision you have a vision you want to achieve it but how what will be the process is like how will you do the marketing for your product how will you manage your human resources or how will you manage your other resources maybe the finances for a particular project how will you manage the change that will get into the process all of that will be part of management so if management and leadership will come together then only we'll make sure that we are achieving the goal we are achieving the desired position that we have in our mind so leadership is a process of social influence that leverages the efforts of others in order to achieve an objective achieve a goal however management is the process of organizing motivating regulating or you can say controlling the human financial physical and information resources of an organization in order to achieve its objective efficiently and effectively we have to make sure that we have to achieve the objective that is about leadership but how will you do that how will you manage the resources how will you make sure that budgeting is fine how will you make sure that the person who's good at a particular job is a fit for that how are you going to hire people how are you going to fire people how will you uh, manage the change in that particular project all of that will be nothing but part of your management so management is all about directing and controlling things or a group of people in order to reach a goal having a clear vision and working towards that social influence motivating people inspiring people for that that is about leadership but managing things organizing things in order to make sure that we reach that goal we reach that desired position with full efficiency and with full effectiveness that is what management is all about as you can see this important note as well the leadership is not the synonym of management these two are not the same terms there is a slight difference however the line between leadership and management can be really blurry sometimes because a person who's a good manager will have to be a good leader as well and a person who's a good leader will or may have to manage certain things as well so all of these things can overlap at times but generally leadership is not a synonym of management these are two completely different things usually managers manage things they control things they direct people they direct things but leaders lead people with a social influence they lead people they motivate them and they make sure they have a clear vision and they turn it into reality but how will they turn that vision into reality with the help of managing things by managing the resources financial resources human resources information resources so that's how we can simply say the leadership and management are two different concepts however the line between leadership and management can be blurry at times because a good leader may have to be a good manager and a good manager will have to be a good leader as well all right so now that we have understood what exactly is the definition of leadership and management it is time for us to understand the relationship between these two terms so what exactly is the relationship between leadership and management as you can see on the screen leadership and management are not synonymous terms we have seen it in the previous module as well that leadership is not a synonym of management these are two completely different terms leadership is more about leading people the social influence however management is more about managing things organizing things directing and controlling people controlling things to be a good leader you don't need to be in a managerial role a manager on the other hand can only be a true manager if he possesses leadership qualities so what we can say is the crux of this entire line would be that each and every manager will have to be a good leader but each and every leader need not to be a good manager why because if you are in a managerial role you have to manage a team or you have to manage an organizations anything at the end of the day you will have to make sure that you create an environment where everyone can grow you have to motivate people being a manager too which is nothing but the role of a leadership so you can say leadership is nothing but one of the functions of management but each and every leader 
डू नॉट नीड टू मैनेज थिंग्स और कंट्रोल थिंग्स और डायरेक्ट पीपल इट्स ऑल अबाउट सोशल इन्फ्लुएंस इट्स अबाउट टर्निंग द विजन इन टू रियलिटी सो वी कैन सिंपली से दैट ईच एंड एवरी मैनेजर विल हैव टू बी अ गुड लीडर मैनेजर्स आर सुपोज टू बी द लीडर्स ऑफ वर्क ग्रुप्स सो दैट सुबोर्डिनेट्स वुड हैप्पीली फॉलो देयर ऑर्डर्स एंड एक्सेप्ट देयर डायरेक्शन अ मैनेजर विदाउट गुड लीडरशिप स्किल्स will fail in his task in his job in his project because they will not be able to create that environment where each and every one will be invested in their job in order to create an environment where everyone will be invested will be completely into the work into the job we have to make sure that we lead people and don't just give them some rules and they have to follow it that will never work we'll have to motivate people we'll have to inspire people we'll have to tell people the importance of something then only they'll do it which is nothing but the roles of a leader basically so we can say that each and every manager will definitely have to be a very good leader in order to make sure that they do the processes in an efficient and effective way a manager has to perform five main functions so these are the five main roles of any manager you talk about any organizations in any sector these will be the five roles planning organizing staffing directing and controlling and leadership is a part of all these functions so we can say that each and every manager will have to possess some leadership skills managers are always involved into planning organizing staffing directing and controlling and leadership will always be a part of all these functions in order to make sure that whatever managers are doing that is going to make some sense and that is going to help people grow help the organizations grow so as a component of management effective leadership behavior emphasizes the importance of creating an environment or atmosphere in which each and every employee can grow and succeed and there is a very small and very important note as well that for maximum organizational effectiveness organizations require strong leadership and strong management now a lot of you may think that okay each and every manager will have to be a good leader then why do we need a leader specifically for any organizations so to be a leader you don't actually need a managerial position you don't need to be at a particular level you don't to need to be a senior manager in order to lead people even if you are a fresher freshly out of your college and you are working in an organization you can still lead people it depends upon what qualities you possess how you make yourself learn things and eventually it comes down to that so you do not need a managerial position in order to lead people but if you want to manage people you want to manage things you definitely need a managerial position so we can say that when we talk about any organization in any sector you talk about ed tech you talk about e commerce you talk about pharmaceutical companies any company in the world it's not that leadership is always better than management or management is always better than leadership there's nothing like one is more than the other it is more about how these two things are blended into one concept as a, a part of the organization how management is interlinked with uh, leadership so it is more about that for a particular uh, organization if we talk about the growth of the organization for the maximum effectiveness we have to make sure that leadership and age ma- management are on the same page and organizations require strong leadership and strong management in order to make sure that whatever desired position they have in mind they will reach it if the management is lacking but the leadership is good they may not be able to achieve the goals similarly if the leadership is good but they are not able to manage things that can also be a worst case scenario so we have to make sure that while we are leading people at the same time we are managing things managing the resources and once these two things will come uh, hand to hand then we will be able to make sure that we reach the goals of the organizations effectively and efficiently all right so let's talk about the importance of leadership and management what exactly is the importance of leadership and management whenever we talk about any organization in any sector what exactly is the role of that so strong leadership and management are important point number 1 to create a clear vision of organizational goals and to communicate the vision and mission to the employees whenever you are working in any organization let's say you are in the project management team or you are in the sales team or marketing team you will have some regular tasks some regular operations that you will have to do and you will always do it 
but at the end of your mind there should always be some clear vision of the long term goal of the organization and that should be clearly communicated to each and every team to each and every employee who's working in the organization and that is something which is done by leadership and management so if your organization will have strong leadership and management then we'll make sure that each and every one knows what exactly is the vision and the mission of the organization that will be clearly communicated with them and they'll work towards it if the vision is not clear even if you are doing your regular tasks perfectly you will never be able to achieve that final goal you will never be able to achieve that desired position if you want to reach to that desired position you want to meet the vision and the mission of the organization we have to make sure that each and every one within the organization is on the same page and even if they are doing some tasks on short term basis they have a clear vision for long run for the organization as well as for themselves in their mind so that is extremely important which is ensured by good leadership strong management and strong leadership you can say then to communicate the vision and mission of the employees to inspire everybody to remain dedicated to their duties to align the employees efforts with the organizational goals for improved efficiency if there is strong leadership and management they will always try to create an environment where each and every one can grow it is always a give and take policy if you are working for any organization the organization will make sure that you are working in such a way that their goals are reached and at the same time you as an employee will make sure that you are working in such a way that you are getting some professional and personal growth as well so both of these things should be balanced and it is balanced if you have a strong management and strong leadership to commit to the long term goals of the organization to create an environment where the organizations can achieve their goals without sacrificing employee satisfaction when we talk about strong leadership and management it is not just about reaching the desired position or reaching the organizational goals it is also about balancing that with employee satisfaction and with employee engagement with employee happiness even if you are meeting the goals you have to make sure at the same times all the employees are satisfied happy and engaged in their work then only they'll be fully invested in their job whatever they are doing so that is so, something which is ensured by strong leadership and management then a strong leadership and management is also important to boost staff morale by winning their trust to provide inputs on how to improve process feedback is also uh, especially constructive feedback is also very very important when we talk about any organization so that is also something which is done by the leadership and management then to increase creativity and loyalty if you will not take care of your employees the employees will never be loyal towards the company they'll do their everyday task but they will never think about the long term vision of the organization but if we balance it if we make sure that each and every one be it a team or a person an individual who's working in the organization is satisfied and is included and is uh, engaged in the work that they are doing then we'll be able to make sure that it will be a give and take policy you'll as a part of the leadership and management team you will take care of the employees employees will be loyal towards the company and eventually you will be able to meet the desired position that you have in your mind for your organization whatever organizational goals are there whatever vision is there you will be able to meet that because employees who are working on everyday basis are fully invested in their job so that is the only way we can reach the goals and that is why strong leadership and strong management is extremely important whenever we talk about any organization in any sector all right so now let's have a look at the difference between leadership and management by now we have understood each and every basic thing about leadership and management we have also seen the relationship between these two terms now it is time for us to see what exactly are the qualities of a good leaders what exactly are the qualities of a good managers and how leadership is a little bit different from management all those things we will be exploring in this particular module so as you can see on the screen first of all we'll start with the qualities of good leaders what are the important qualities that all the leaders will have which will make them good number 1 self awareness so first thing which is common in all the leaders is that they are self aware they know what are their strengths they know what are their weaknesses and they are always trying to overcome their weaknesses they are very good learners as well 
then personality development they always look for their personal growth they always want to learn things they always want to apply whatever knowledge they have into action in order to turn the vision into reality then focus on the big picture all the leaders will have always one thing which is always common in them that is they focus on the big picture if they want to do something as of now but they know that it is going to harm them in long run they will never do it because they know and they always look at the big picture be it in professional life be it in personal life that is one important quality then focus on developing others leaders are not self obsessed they want personal growth they want professional growth all of that is fine but at the same time they always want to develop others as well they always want to explain things to other they always want to make sure that it's an environment that they are creating in which everyone can grow and not just themselves so that is one very important and a very good quality that all the leaders will generally have in common then empathy now what is empathy at the first place empathy is nothing but the quality in which you can put yourself into the shoes of others you can empathize with somebody you can think from their perspective and you can try to understand the problem so this is one very good quality even in management as well if you are managing somebody or you are leading somebody it is extremely important that you think of things from their perspective let's say there is some conflict at the workplace how will you be able to solve that conflict between you or some other party or between two separate parties how can you solve that conflict how can you resolve that conflict if you will have empathy you can definitely do it you can talk to both the parties you can understand their situation from their perspective by putting yourself into their shoes and then you can have a meeting and solve it out so empathy is a very very important skill if you want to lead people if you want to influence people then flexible mindset it's not that they have a rigid mindset they are always uh, adaptable they can always change themselves according to the situation if the market is like this they will do that if the market is not like this they will find something else they have a flexible mindset they they don't have a rigid mindset if you want to change their opinion you can they will always allow you to do so then communication they are good with words they can always uh, uh, communicate something very clearly they are good at giving clear instructions and they are good at taking clear instructions so that is one important quality of a good leader again and then finally influence they can influence people they can motivate people they can inspire people whatever knowledge they have they can turn into reality they can put it into action and can actually get some useful out, output of it so that is something these are the uh, important qualities that all the leaders generally have in common now let's also look at the qualities of good managers number 1 they expect excellence if you are managing people you are managing things your number one quality should be you have to expect excellence you have to expect the highest standards possible if you will expect that then only you will be able to make that possible if you will expect lower standards you will never meet the higher standards so in order to achieve something in order to achieve the high standards you have to expect that from your team from the work that you are doing then conflict resolution because when you are managing people when you are managing things there will always be conflict let's say you are in construction industry or you are in pharmaceutical industry you are working on a project right now there will always be some conflicts sometime that conflict can be between your organization and some other organization sometimes that can be between teams let's say there's a conflict between sales team and marketing team sometimes that can be between two different individuals within the same team let's say within the sales team there are two people and they have some conflict between them their interests are different their personalities are different they are unique individuals so there are chances when we come to a creative field together there can be some conflicts now how can you resolve that conflict that is one important uh, quality that all the good uh, managers will have their accountability they will be responsible for what they are doing they will be accountable for that that is also one important quality then transparency and how uh, fair they are with their team they should should not be any kind of partiality it should be completely transparent to the team that from which perspective you are taking the decisions then communication 
just like the leaders communication is extremely important giving clear instructions and taking clear instructions is extremely important you have to be good with your words when you are saying something and you have to be good with your listening when you are listening to somebody so that is what taking clear instructions and giving clear instruction is all about so communication is extremely important in order to make sure that whatever vision you have in your mind you can communicate the same to your team to the people who are working for you because they are the people who are going to make it possible then uh, ability to delegate delegate tasks delegate work and then finally leadership as i already told you that each and every manager will have to be a good leader at the end of the day so you should have leadership skills also if you are a good uh, manager because eventually you will have to motivate people you will have to influence people you will have to lead them as well so leadership is also one of the very important quality of good managers now let me differentiate between leadership and management so point number 1 is that leadership is about leading people by influencing and motivating them however management is about directing and controlling a group of people or entities so leadership is about that social influence management is about organizing managing controlling things controlling resources human resources financial resources information resources on the other hand leadership is not about that it's about turning the vision into reality by having that social influence by motivating people the leaders are people oriented however management managers are task oriented they are focused on tasks they want to uh, make processes simpler they want to make sure that whatever we are working on is efficient and is effective then outcomes are uh, the achievements when you talk about leadership however outcomes are the results when you talk about management how will you make sure that one person is a good leader whatever their achievements are whatever they have achieved as their outcome that will decide it now how will you decide what makes a manager a good manager that will be always dependent upon the results what are the results that you have achieved in the past based upon that we will say whether you are a good manager or not so when you talk about management it depends upon the results when you talk about leadership it depends a lot on the achievements leaders power through influence and charisma management when we talk about so managers power through formal authority and position so each and every manager will always have some managerial position but to be a good leader you do not need a managerial position you can lead people by influencing them directly leaders have followers managers have subordinates there will be people who will follow you if you are a leader but if you are a manager there will be people because you are at a managerial position they will be your subordinates they will have to follow the rules and regulations that are set by you so that is a clear differentiation between leadership and management in the most simple words we can easily say leaders lead people by influencing them and managers manage things manage people manage groups of people by directing them controlling them so these are the two uh, you know clear cut differentiation between leadership and management but in order for uh, an organization to grow if an organization wants to grow effectively we have to make sure that we have strong leadership as well as strong management both of these aspects are extremely important whenever you talk about the growth of any company all right so now let's talk about leadership theories in management so there are some six theories that we will be discovering in this particular module we'll start with the great man theory according to the great man theory great leaders are born and not made leadership is a natural trait and leaders possess inherent qualities such as intuition intelligence charm etc in very simple words according to the great man theory it's not that you can become a leader if you have to be a leader you will be born a leader according to this theory so you will have qualities such as intuition intelligence charm which will make you a leader it is not something that you can learn it is something that you are born with then comes the trait theory according to the trait theory the certain natural characteristics tend to produce good leaders that means all the good leaders will have certain characteristics which will be common in them according to the trait theory however having certain qualities does not always imply that someone is a good leader let me give you an example for this this can be a little complex to understand so as you can see on the screen as well some leaders have excellent communication skills but not every communicator makes a good leader 
so according to trade theory let's say each and every leader will have good communication skills but that does not mean that all the people who can communicate well will be very good leaders because along with communication skills there will be certain other traits certain other personality traits or maybe knowledge based skills that will be there which will make you a good leader so each and every leader will have certain skills in common but if a person is having that particular skill that will not make him or her a good leader then comes the behavioral theory according to the behavioral theory it emphasizes how a person's environment or atmosphere shapes him or her into a leader rather than inherent skills so according to this particular skill that is the behavioral theory your leadership style your leadership qualities it depends upon your environment and not on your genes or your inherent skills so this is completely opposite of the great man theory according to the great man theory leadership is something that you are born with it is not something that you can learn with time but according to the behavioral theory it is not something that is leadership is not something that you are born with it is something that you develop depending upon the atmosphere or your environment then comes the transactional theory so according to the transactional theory of leadership it is a study as a system of rewards and penalties Our order and structure are more important to transactional leadership or leaders than innovation so if you talk about transaction leaders for them creativity and innovation comes uh, after order and structure as we have seen already that order and structure is part of management not really part of leadership so according to this theory order and structure is even important for leaders more than innovation or creativity and that's why we call this particular theory as management theory too because according to this theory transaction leaders are more inclined towards order and structure then comes the transformational theory so according to transformational theory leadership is studied as a result of positive relationships between the leaders and team members since it is about uh, relationship between the team members or the leaders so we also call it as leadership theory and transformational leaders encourage motivate or inspire others so that is about transformational leaders then finally comes the situational theory the sixth theory that we have no leadership style is superior to others according to this theory we can't say that this particular leader is better than this leader it always depends upon situation that's why it is also known as situational theory because according to this theory leaders whether they are good or bad it depends upon the circumstances it depends upon the situation the best leader is the one who can change his or her style as per the circumstances as per the given situation who's adaptable who's having a flexible mindset the adaptability of situational leaders is what distinguishes them so these are the six theories that we have as you have seen the great man theory according to which leaders are born and not made then the trait theory according to which all the leaders will have some qualities which are common in them but if they have that quality that does not imply that they will be great leaders then the uh, behavioral theory according to that uh, leadership is not something that you are born with rather it is something that you develop over a period of time based upon your atmosphere then transactional theory which is also known as your management theory according to which the leaders uh, prefer order and management and structure more than innovation and creativity then transformational theory according to which leaders will always focus on a positive relationship between team members and the leaders actually so that's why it is also known as the relationship theory and then finally the situational theory according to which the best leader is the one who can change his or her style based upon the circumstances based upon the situations so these are the six theories that we have in management for leadership all right so let's talk about leadership styles in management before we actually get into that and we try to discuss all the 10 leadership styles that we have in management we should first know what exactly is leadership style at the first place so when we say leadership style that simply means the orientation of the leader how uh, the leader works basically what exactly is the way with which the leader is working what is the pace of that leader what is that one prominent quality that that leader is having in order to achieve the goals that is something which is 
डिसाइडेड बाय द लीडरशिप स्टाइल ऑफ दैट पर्सन वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग टेन डिफरेंट लीडरशिप स्टाइल्स इन मैनेजमेंट इन दिस पर्टिकुलर मॉड्यूल नंबर वन इज कोच सो कोच स्टाइल इज बेसिकली लीडर्स हु आर मोटिवेशनल हु आर इंस्पिरेशनल दे इंस्पायर द टीम मोटिवेट द टीम इन ऑर्डर टू रीच टू द डिजायर पोजिशन दैट दे हैव इन देयर माइंड फॉर देयर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन देन विजनरी टाइप लीडर्स सो दोज आर प्रोग्रेस फोकस्ड एंड इंस्पिरेशनल लीडर्स अगेन दे फोकस अ लोट ऑन प्रोग्रेस हाउ एवरी वन इज वर्किंग वेदर द प्रोसेस इज दैट दे आर फॉलोइंग आर एफिशियंट आर इफेक्टिव ओर नोट that is something which is the main concern of the visionary type leaders then servant type leaders they emphasize on employee satisfaction and collaboration they make the entire process very participated they take inputs from everyone they collaborate with others and then they also take care of employee satisfaction whether the employees are invested in their job or not whether the employees are happy satisfied with the work that they are doing or not and based upon that they take all the decisions then autocratic so these are authoritarian and focused on results and efficiency so these type of leaders that is autocratic leaders they do not really take so much input from their teams they try to take decisions and everyone will have to follow that they are authoritarian they have that authority there's a lot of fear in this type of leadership style where the team will be hesitant to ask a lot of things but at the same time in certain cases this leadership leadership style is assumed to be one of the best then less is fair uh, leadership style this is a french word which simply means let them do so in this type of leadership style the leaders will not pay a lot of attention to the work that the team is doing they will let them do whatever they are doing and the supervision will be very very less they will not supervise or control each and everything rather than that they will believe in their team and they will let them do whatever work they are doing in order to achieve the goals of the organization then democratic this is completely opposite of autocratic so democratic leaders are very very participative they take inputs from everyone and based upon those inputs they take the final decision so they are very innovative creative they promote innovation and creativity as well and along with that they make sure each and everyone is included and they take uh, uh, inputs from everyone all the managers all the team members and based upon that the final decision is given by the democratic leaders then pace setter pace setter simply means the one who sets the pace so they are very driven by performance they are completely focused on performance they analyze the performance of each and every one try to optimize it in order to reach the results reach the objectives of the organization then transformational leaders or transformational style of leadership so this particular style is focused on clear communication and goal setting it is more about getting people out of their comfort zone setting a goal for them and then making them achieve it then transactional leaders are focused on performance mentorship and training they provide rewards to people which motivates them which can be in the form of monetary benefits or non monetary benefits and the people will be motivated to work because they have some motivation they have the driving force to work then bureaucratic so those kind of leaders basically they are duty focused completely focus on the roles and responsibility which is given to them and in order to make sure that whatever they are doing is done perfectly so they focus more on that so these are the 10 different leadership styles that we have we cannot say that this style is better than the other it always depends upon the circumstances and the situation in a particular situation one of these styles can be the best in other situations the other can be best so it always depends upon the circumstances that we have based upon that whatever style you choose that will decide how good of a leader you are all right so let's discuss about leadership principles we have already discussed leadership styles and leadership theories in management it is time for us to uh, now discuss about the 14 leadership principles given by amazon as you can see on the screen number 1 is customer obsession so according to this principle leaders pay attention to the competitors but they obsess over customers there is nothing which is bigger than customers for good leaders they will always pay attention to competitor analysis how their competition is doing and they are competitive in that sense but when it comes to customer there is nothing bigger than that they always make sure that their customer is not facing any difficulty in terms of getting the product or the service so they that is the good leaders obsess over customers then ownership 
leaders are owners they are responsible they are accountable for whatever they are doing whatever their job is they are held accountable for that and they take full responsibility of whatever they are doing they don't sacrifice long term values for short term results let's say you have a big picture you have a clear vision for the organization but you have a short term project also if you will do that you will get some monetary benefits you will never do that if you are a good leader because if it is not helping you in achieving the long term goal in achieving the vision of the organization that is not going to make a difference so you will always have to make sure that whatever short term goals you are getting you will only achieve it if it is going to help in the long run if it is going to help in the vision of the organization so leaders always think from a bigger perspective they have a big picture and their focus is always on achieving the goals and the vision of the organization so they will never sacrifice long term values long term core values for short term results or short term goals then they invent and simplify leaders expect and require innovation they always find ways to simplify they are driven by innovation and creativity and they promote innovation and creativity and then they simplify things so that each and everyone in the team or within the organization can understand it then they are right a lot now leaders have strong judgments and good instincts as we had discussed already that it's a combination of inherent skills and the skills that you can learn over a period of time so instincts is one of those inherent skills sometimes people can learn it too but generally it is believed according to this principle the leaders have very good strong instincts and very good judgments they can always guess they have this gut feeling about things they can always see it in a bigger picture and decide whether it is going to turn right or wrong and based upon that they take the decisions as well they have a logical mind but at the same time they are right a lot because of their good instincts and good judgments learn and be curious for leaders especially for good leaders there is always room for improvement leaders believe in going to the bed a little bit smarter every day they are never done learning they always want to learn new things about people about teams about organization about new technologies so many things for their personal development professional growth each and everything they want to develop themselves along with developing others and that's why they are never done learning they always want to learn more and more then sixth principle is hire and develop the best good leaders always hire the best expect the best and then develop or train the best as well leaders raise the performance bar higher with every hire or every promotion whenever they are hiring they'll make sure that the person that they are going to hire is going to reach higher standards compared to the other uh, employees and that's why they always set the bars high and high so that they can expect uh, high results they can expect excellence from the team that they have hired then insist on the highest standards leaders have relentlessly high standards they expect excellence in whatever the employees are doing whatever the followers are doing in terms of their job duties or responsibilities they think big leaders think big and think differently to serve customers and that's why they promote creativity and innovation as well they take inputs from other and they take the final decision based upon their strong judgments strong instincts and their bigger picture that they have in the mind for the organization for reaching the goals of the organization bias for action there's always a significant gap between knowledge and action they are biased for action whatever knowledge you have you have to put it into action then only it is going to help the customers so uh, the good leaders are always biased for action speed does matter for leaders they are the pace setters and pace is important to them so they expect efficiency and effectiveness in whatever you are doing frugality leaders accomplish more with fewer resources economic is also one important aspect that they have in their mind good leaders will always achieve more things with even lesser resources then 11th principle is earn trust leaders earn trust by listening attentively and treating others respectfully they respect each and every one within the team within the organization and build that trust and that's why they can have that social influence where people will get motivated by whatever they are doing by whatever they are saying dive deep leaders pay attention to details and operate at all levels 
they make sure that they respect everyone and at the same time they pay attention to each and every small detail there should be nothing which is hidden from the leaders they always take care of each and everything even the minute details about people about things about projects and then based upon all that they take the final judgments about uh, any any decision that they have to make then have backbone disagree and commit if there's uh, a decision that they have to make and they disagree with something they disagree with the decision they will always speak they will always take a stand for that leaders challenge decisions when they disagree and then they commit themselves to prove that as well it's not about having an argument it's more about a collaborative approach they always take a collaborative approach they give their ideas they are strongly opinionated and they challenge decisions whenever they disagree and they provide their ideas and collaborate so that they can achieve the goals of the organization in a much better way more efficiently and more effectively and then they deliver results leaders uh, never compromise on quality and deliver results they make sure they whatever the customer is demanding whatever is the requirement of the customer is there that will be delivered with the highest quality possible So according to Amazon these are the 14 principles for leadership. All right. So now we have reached towards the end of this particular course. I'm really glad that you have covered each and every module to reach to the end of this course. I'm very sure that you have learned a lot of things about leadership as well as about management. What exactly is leadership? What is management? How these two terms are interconnected but are still different, are not synonymous to each other. I hope all these concepts are very very clear to you and along with that you have also learned the leadership theories, styles as well as leadership principles by Amazon. So let's just summarize this entire course in very few points that I have mentioned over here. leadership is not the synonym of management these are two different things as we have already seen that leadership and management can overlap at times every manager will have to be a good leader at one point of time but that does not mean that these two terms that is leadership and management are the synonym of each other these are not these are two completely different concepts which can overlap at times and the fine line between these two concepts can be blurry at times because each and every manager will have to be a very good leader but that is not true for the leaders each and every leader need not to be a very good manager then managers manage things and leaders lead people that is the basic difference between managers and leaders leaders are very people oriented they believe in social influence they influence people motivate them inspire them to reach to the desired position on the other hand management is more about controlling things directing things organizing things in order to reach to the organizational goals more effectively and efficiently there are a lot of ground level work and experience is required to develop the attributes of a competent manager and leader some of these skills you are born with some of these skills you'll develop based upon your environment your atmosphere but a lot of skills and a lot of ground level work and experience is required to be a strong leader or a strong manager for maximum organizational effectiveness organizations require strong leadership and management both managers and leaders are crucial for any business we can't say that leaders are better than managers or managers are better than leaders leaders are equally important as managers are for any organization in order to make sure that that organizations grow on full pace and reach the organizational goals and the vision of the organization if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet i want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so that you don't miss out on any new updates or video releases from great learning if you enjoy this video show us some love and like this video knowledge increases by sharing so make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues make sure to comment on the video for any queries or suggestions and i'll respond to your comments